In Timothy, the Bible says, Paul writes to his young son, spiritual son, he calls him my son Timothy. He says, meditate on the things that I've just told you now and give yourself fully. Commit yourself to these things and your profiting will appear to all. Glory to God. All people will see your blessing. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless this reading of the word and the teaching thereof. Give yourself wholly to the teachings and your profiting will appear to all. Hallelujah. It's a blessing. Amen. Now let me first uh, talk to who? Let me speak to you that have not yet become a member of a church. Is it nice that I'm speaking to everybody? Mm. Why must you be a member of a church? Our church now, BMI, we never had it before, but we have now uh, started to introduce benefits for members. You know, there were always benefits, but now we've actually started to table it. Yeah, so you will see once you are a member, I think we're going to give you a little booklet very soon. Members' benefits. Do you see? It's like some people have medical aid, others don't. Huh? When you come to us, to anyone city, they ask you, do you have medical aid? You say, no, tiger bug. <laughs> tiger bug. Of Dag Hospital. Waar blij jylle? Klaaks estate. Dag Hospital. There you wait for hours in a line before they look after you. Is it right? If you're not dead, you can still wait in the line, they say. <laughs> but if you have medical aid, first class treatment. Isn't it right? So there's a, there's a benefit of being a member of the medical aid. Do you understand? So there will also be a benefit for being a member of the house of God. That's BMI membership benefits. But I'm not really talking about that this morning. I'm going to talk to you about spiritual benefits. Glory to God. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 15. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 15. Of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Beautiful. Here the Bible makes it clear that there's a family in heaven and there's a family on earth. Amen? And that family is the church. Hallelujah. BMI is also a family. Oh, yes. Some people actually don't like the way we are so close with one another. And they come and they accuse us of many bad things. But we are a family. Do you know? And we are more than just a family in the sense of just a church. We are very close. Now, I support a club called Liverpool. Have you heard about this club? Now, there are many other uh, teams that try to be like us, but they can't. Because when, when they say, we are a club, we say, no, we are a family. And here with us, you never walk alone. You see? If you're going through difficulty, you have a family. Yesterday, one of our pastors got married. And he first came to my wife and he was saying that, oh, he doesn't know how he's going to make it because Labola has taken all his money. You know, some of these ladies are expensive to buy. <laughs> and then my wife said, don't worry. You are part of a family. So we called all the brothers and sisters together. And we said, one of our sons is getting married. Let's make it nice for him. Amen. At BMI. I, th I actually think I want to steal that slogan 
At BMI, you will never walk alone. What do you think about that? Is it, mm -hmm. <laughs> I've got some objections there from the sound desk. <laughs> but some, is a, some, some are clubs and some are families. And then, so here the Bible talks about the church is a family. Everybody say family. family. And why you must, be a, you must become a member of the church? Because you're part of a family. Amen. Whether you like it or not, you're part of this family. And even if you have a little bit of a misunderstanding, you don't leave your family. I mean, many of you have a fight with your family members, isn't it true? But you never went to home affairs to change your surname. At the quaker shall say blame. You are part of a family and we belong together. Hallelujah. In a lifetime commitment. I'm actually talking about commitment this morning and family members are committed for life. I attended a funeral of my father's brother just a few days ago actually and I was surprised to see so many family members gather that I haven't seen in years. You know, it's the funerals that bring the families back together again. And I realized that, look, once you're family, you can't really get away from it. You can, you can be uh, the, the, the black sheep of the family, but you are still part of the family. Do you understand? So you must belong to the same family in a lifetime commitment. Glory to God. Number two, you're not just part of a family, you're part of a building. I'm explaining why you must become a permanent member of the church. Many people don't become members. They just want to casual around. And you don't get benefits for casualing. Only permanent people get good benefits. Hallelujah. You are part of a building. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 9. Listen to this beautiful scripture. For we are the laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. Then it says, you are God's building. Can everybody say building? building? I'm asking you to repeat these words because it helps to stick into your memory. I was a school teacher for many years. So I know if I repeat things, then people remember. Do you understand? And then the other thing is that our church, humility is a very great virtue. So people don't have a problem to repeat what I tell them to repeat. In case you are visiting, I'm just telling you, why do you think these people are like children? Because they are humble. Amen? Amen. Jesus warned us, if you don't be like a child, you can't enter the kingdom. We are part of a building. This is why we must become permanent. Buildings are permanent. When, once we put the blocks in here, the, the maxi bricks, we don't hit it out. Once it's late, it's late. Amen. Your blocks in your house is late. You don't get up the next morning and see the toilet has moved. Say, hey, I got a new was it toilet. No. It's permanently at the same place. So you must be permanently at the same place also. Hallelujah. You are a building. Glory to God. And that's why the Bible talks about the church being building blocks. You see, every block fits together to make something bigger. So you form one of these blocks of the church. Glory to God. Number three, you are not just a family or building. You are also a garden. This is what the Bible says. You are part of a garden. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 5. And now go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard, which in some, some uh, um, versions it's called, uh, the, what, what I will do to my garden. I will take away the heads thereof, and it shall be eaten up and broken down. So God is talking about his garden. Hmm? If we are like a garden, then each one of you is like a plant in the garden. 
And if you uproot a plant and replant it in another spot, you endanger the life of that shrub. Amen? And if you do it continually, you will kill the plant. Now I know some of you, please forgive me, in Delft and in Chestnut Place, you hardly know what I'm talking about. Because you're only sweeping sand every day away from your stoop. But there are some people who have gardens. We have a garden here. And once you've planted something, it's very risky to take it out and to move it. Because what happens, the roots start taking uh, depth and the, the, the plant starts getting shape. And once you uproot it and move it, the chances are that it won't survive. So once you become part of God's garden, you must stay planted where you are. Amen? Now I'm teaching all of you this because we have a culture of hopping around from church to church. And many people have a culture of not staying in one place. And maybe that's the reason why you're not flourishing, my brother and my sister. A, a, a plant that's moved all the time can't flourish, can't grow, can't bring forth any fruit. Because just when it was about to be established, you moved it. And so many of you parents who keep hopping because of offenses. Your children could have been wonderful pastors and bishops and evangelists and pastors. You have moved them and what have they become? Drunkards and dropouts. Hmm. I'll come to the reason why people don't like to stay in one place. Because of this type of pastor that you have in a church like this. He doesn't say nice things all the time. Only a little time, a little time. But the big time, he rebukes and he reproves according to the word of the Lord. In zei wil mos of jou laat vertelie. En zei is oprukkerig en opgemakerig en alle gekakerig. You don't like you don't like rebuke, you don't like correction, but the Bible says the word of God is profitable for rebuke and correction. That's why you're not planted. Because you get offended. You like Satan. And God chastises those he loves. Stop hopping around. The Bible says in Job chapter 1 verse 7, the devil went to and fro, seeking where he can find, where he can find problems. If you start going to and fro from church to church, you're just like Satan. Look there. Going, going to and fro, put it in yellow, they can't see it. And the Lord asked Satan, where do you come from? And he said, I was going to and fro in the earth. I went from church to church. Aye. And I was walking up and down. Mercy. Will you be part of a garden? Yes. Hallelujah. God doesn't want to replant you. He's planted you here. Amen. Yes. Glory to God. I can show you Christians that has been replanted and what has happened to them. Hmm? Don't be fooled by, by, by churches that treat you nice if you come there. We do the same. We give you a nice... <laughs> we give you a nice card. We take you for Mari biscuits and Unmark. You know Unmark? Fusion. We give you special treatment, Charlie. Say no. Say no. We go up on the pinkster cake of here with dry and the half. But he said, "Mos moi." He looks. He says, "Moi." But after a while, I come my devil via a new. I like you. You have your alcoholic biscuits and frulati, ne? 
Oh, sy is nou klaar niet gewees, sy is klaar niet, sy moet nou geplant raak. Nou moet sy bykie vertel word. You must be corrected, rebuked according to the word of God. And then you can't take it anymore. Sy sê, nee man, nou kom sy by uh, vier van God pinkste protestante. There they should give you the mic. Hier is a broek, geteig. Staan sy voor en toe in die naam van die Heere. En sy staan achter en toe in die naam van die Heere. Now you say, yeah by this church we can at least get the mic. Yeah by Pastor Chris you never get the mic. Shame on you. You can't settle anywhere. You are like Satan going to and fro. You are not established. Your fruit of your labor. You can't show anything. You can't show anything for your ministry. I want to be nice to you and tell you you must be planted. And over a while you'll see the flourishing of the Lord in your life. All these young children that are flourishing, going through school, university, getting jobs, these are other things that is added later. But they are receiving it now. And they are blessed. They are prosperous. You could have been there too. But you keep hopping. You have a hopping spirit. Uh, you like a bunny. Hou oh, opspring man. Plant your wortels in the name of the Lord. You will be like a garden. Amen. Number four. You are part of a tree. Are you still with me? You are part of a tree. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. You must be connected to me. He that abideth in me and I in him. This is in John 15 verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Amen? If you cut off a branch from the tree, it will die. We all know that. Then it's only good for, for bright place. Yes. Because a branch is supposed to be permanently fastened to a bigger branch. Or a tree trunk. Isn't it right? You must have no plans of moving anywhere. Amen. So all those new members joining now. You know. A church has no fines or restrictions. It's not like if you leave we're going to fine you. Anybody can come and go as they want to. And that's the liberty that people use. Not knowing it's to their own detriment. Yeah. I, I'm leaving now. I'm leaving. But you will not flourish. Amen. Hmm. There was a pastor. You know this is sad when I tell the story. He was very active in the church. Right here in Dell. But he kept moving from church to church. And eventually, he turned out to be a Rasta. When I saw him on the street, he said, Pastor! He said, Chaman! Chaman! He said, Auri Pastor! He had this colorful Bob Marley. And he was first a Pentecostal pastor. It's from hopping from place to place. The the the, the boss laser. The 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 the, the, the boss laser. <laughs> what do you call what do you call it in English? Ticks, ticks and fleas. They will sit on you. Later you will be like a, 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 a. Like, like a rasta. Many of you have seen that pastor. He's here in, the, he's here, he's here in Dell. Audi Jaman. Lion of Judah. 
from hopping from place to place. You must remain strong. Don't backslide. Amen. Number five. If you remain planted, you will flourish. Hallelujah. Psalm 92 verse 13. Psalm 92 verse 13. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Amen. This is true that you will flourish. You will flourish. We're not saying that there's no legal grounds for a person to leave a church. Of course there is. But we are saying to you is that you must be permanently attached for your own benefit. Amen. You cannot compare a planted member to a roving member. Stay in one place. Develop roots and flourish. Hmm? As you remain in one place, you meet many family members. You even make some business contacts. Oh, yes. Lasting friendships that will help you through your lifetime. But if you stay for a short while, it does not allow you to develop the type of relationship that will be a blessing in your life. Yes. So if you are planted, you will flourish. Hallelujah. Pastor Derek was saying yesterday how he met his wife. He, 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 he said, I made him a cell leader. For I, for I made him a cell leader. I saw in him the potential and the excitement and the zeal to work. I said, okay, let me ordain you as a cell leader. And he said, in the cell, while he was having cell with few of his members, he said, my pastor said, the, church, the cell must grow. We can't stay two and three and use the same scripture every week where two or three are gathered together in my name. We must also use other scriptures. We shall multiply. We shall not be few. We shall be many. So he said, start bringing people. And then this one girl, she brought the lady that's now his wife, brought her to the cell church. But he was trying to explain if Pastor Chris didn't make me a cell leader, I would not have met my wife in that specific church. Because that wife was a born-again child, wasn't going from nightclub and those places. She was a church-type girl. So you would only find her in the church. Oh, yes. And he, he said, thank you so much. for You see, and I said to somebody sitting next to me, what he's saying now is what many people forget. They can't make the connections when they get the blessing here. They get the blessing here. They don't remember what happened here. When I said, kneel down. You shall be a cell leader. His wife was connected to the kneel down. And his child that will be born from that wife. Is connected to this kneel down. His prosperity. Working in the church, working, and she's also going to be part of us. They're just on honeymoon now. They're busy doing some things. And honeymoon couples too. Kijk, zij is op haar honeymoon gegaan. He. Want daar was die geld. Zij moest die Wendy eens afbetaal wat jullie ingetrek. Maar die zwaar kreeg het op een einde kom. If you plant yourself and stop hopping around because you connect yourself to a family. Hallelujah. And the blessings that flow from above. Remember, anointing is an oil, it flows down. It cannot flow upward. It comes from the beard of Aaron down to the garments. And you that can't be under covering, 
You that can't be under authority, you will never get from what is on the top to come down. Then you must also look at under what covering are you operating. Because you cannot have what your leader doesn't have. In the spiritual terms. Oh yeah. You cannot. Pastor Lafoy always taught me, my pastor, he said, water never rises above its own level. It's a scientific fact. Water cannot rise above its own level. If the water is here, then this water will also come up here. And he said, you can never lead the people to where you have not gone before. Hey! So I better be a step ahead if I want to take you up. Say what you all up na in na ka pastor to. Hij jy a goeie pastor gaan. Hy was hier a sekulari man. Die Here bring vir jou na goeie plek man. Maar jy het a dik siekte, jy kan nie stil sit nie. What is wrong with you? You see that thing is a satanic nature. To get you away from your blessing. I'm telling you. It's Satan. You can't see him. He's working behind the scenes. To get you away from your blessing. He works through many ways. Not to get you. What God has intended for you. He's the enemy of God. So he becomes your enemy. Hey let me rush. Let me rush. Let me rush. When you are permanently. Planted in breakthrough. You can freely invest. Amen. Uh, we don't have to, you don't have to have doubts about giving money to the church because whatever we make nice here, you are going to enjoy it. And your children will enjoy it. And your grandchildren will also enjoy it. We'll freely invest here. Hallelujah. You see, Many of the things in this church, there's, behind here is a fridge they use. It's, it's my fridge. One of the TVs here is my old TVs. I give it. Because I'm, I'm not thinking of leaving. Ek dink hiervan gaan nie. Niemand kan vir my feie hier nie. Ek gaan nie bly. So this is almost like, whatever I give here will stay here. Whether it's there at my house or here, it's here. Yeah, I'm here. I, for, for I, I am here. But when you're not sure where you're going to be, then you can't give freely, you see. One brother, he, he gave something, and then when he, when, he, when he got offended, he wanted to leave to say, Bro, can I get my tinders back? To say, hey, go to off to man. Ga vraag vir die magistraat of hy jou tiendes kan kou haal hier so. That's when you, that's when you, you keep moving, you, you can't be planted. Amen? You will freely invest. And lastly, lastly, lastly. When you are part of this family, we can be happy with you. We can celebrate your victories. Amen? Listen, I've seen the sadness of people who, 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 who live themselves through offense before the time. And when they have some small victory, there's no one to celebrate with them. As the babies come, they stock you alone. They in your man. You, you get angry with him because you are, you're tired of keeping the child. He's turned now. By breakthrough, there's too many people that will keep your child. Later, you won't even, the child won't even recognize you anymore. So many mothers are here to help you because we celebrate your victory. Now you buy a new city golf. Hey! Niemand is daarom vir jou congratulate you, want jy sit alleen, you sit alone. But at the church where there's a family, we all come say, hey, kijk hoe mooi like die kar, We are happy with you. If you 
You move into your new house, we are happy with you. Amen. You have many people that can celebrate. Romans 12 verse 15 says, Rejoice with them. Romans 12 15, Rejoice with them that rejoice. Hallelujah. And weep with them that weep. And the same goes for when you have trouble. We will be glad with you. Hallelujah. You know, there were people that were part of this project when we started. And then the enemy somehow got into their mind. You see, if the mind is not right, as he copy like a see, weg. Says weg. Now they must pass by you from a distance. I say, I hear a kick in my leg, I kick it, I'm going to it. Satan got you. You didn't think in the way I'm teaching you now. You see, the word of God is to transform your thinking. Oh, yes. Listen to this beautiful chapter uh, in Psalm 126, verse 1. He says, When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. And they said among the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. Beautiful, isn't it? I tell you, when we sat here on this sand coral tree, me and Pastor Charlie and the other young, young men, we, we were like them that dreamed. Now, we have completed one part of our vision. Only one part, there are more parts coming. Hallelujah. And our mouth is filled with laughter. Glory to God. And our tongue with singing. And they say among the heathen, Yer, maar die Yer was goed voor die mensen. Kashe tola mandala kata. They say among the heathen, the Lord has done great things. Do you know that song? He has done great things. Yeah. He has done great things. Manu Parata Fast Jay. Jay was Samitos when we sat and dream. Sometimes I want to tell you, like, please don't be stupid, brothers and sisters. Don't let the enemy come into your heart and confuse you. Resist the devil, and he will free from you. Become a permanent member. Be planted somewhere so you can start to flourish. Hallelujah. This double-mindedness, the Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Hallelujah. Will we sit and quote the scripture together one day? Or will you have abandoned all the friends that you struggled with in the early days? Oh no. Permanent relationship will give you people to rejoice in the day of rejoicing. There are better days coming for breakthrough. Ask your neighbor, will you be here? Will you be, will you be here to see those better days? Hmm. Hallelujah. And then lastly, you will see the fruit of your labor. You see the fruit of your labor. You can't see fruit if you don't stay long. Amen. You can't see fruit if you can't stay long. Glory to God. Mm. You will have consistent pastoral care. Consistent. There were some people who I pastored 20 years ago and I'm still pastoring them now. I'm not dealing with their problems. I'm dealing with their children's problems and some of them their grandchildren's problems but they are receiving from me consistent pastoral care. Yes. There's nothing hidden anymore. You know, new members, when they come, they don't want pastor to find out about their sins. But if you've been here for 20 years, ah, the pastor will tell all of me, where can I go? 
Toe ek in die tronk was, toe bij die paas, toe ek vir my uit. Do you see, that's if you stay long. And if you stay permanent. Hallelujah. There's a mistake in small, short relationships. Let me tell the people this. You know, Joshua, I'm closing, you can keep playing. Joshua made the mistake when the Gibeonites lied to him. If any of you read your Bibles often, you will see that Joshua destroyed the, uh, the people who lived in the promised land. The Gergesites, the Jebusites, the Bikonbites. He destroyed all the sites there. But the Gibeonites, they came up with a clever plan. They came and told him, Joshua, we come from a far country. They lied to Joshua. You see? We're not from these people around here that God told you to, that you must destroy. <laughs> we came from a far country. And you see, it was a deception. Say deception. Short relationships can be a deception. Kijk net een meisje wat sy nou een paar maanden gedate het. Jy, sy reek altijd lekker. Haar is mooi. Naaltjes is rooi. Ja, dan kyk na sieve, ja. Swil koost op. Tanne uit. Teeth is out. The swirl coast is on. But you see, in the short term, you thought it was, everything is nice. There's a deception in staying for a short while. Stay, stay long. Then you see, who, who's the real McCoy? Who are you really? There were people who just came here and also had heard something. Ah, the pastors. Later I see them come again and somehow they sit there at the back. I think maybe after all these years they, they realize maybe they were wrong. They should have stayed longer before they made up their minds. That's why if you're new here, we welcome you. We really welcome you. But we will not make the mistake of Joshua. And you tell us you were an elder there by Fratis Wachter Ministries International. No, 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 you just gonna have to wait a little bit because we, we don't fall for the deception of short relationships. The Gibeonites tricked him. And because he gave his word, he couldn't destroy them. So we had to make them drawers of water and carriers of wood. But they were amongst the Israelites all the time because of the mistake of Joshua. Are you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are you understanding? But when you're with people for a short while, there's no quarrels. There's no emotional disturbances. No, no worrying comments or misunderstandings. But long relationships have been through many tests. Amen? And there's a greater trust that has developed. Ah. Hallelujah. You will show much fruit when you are when you are around for a longer time. Hallelujah. Now let me just say this in closing. To those members that stood, I'm going to call your name now. We, what are we expecting of you here at Breakthrough? We expect your commitment. Amen. What does it mean when I ask for commitment? I'm asking for generally four things. I'm asking for your time. And remember it, I have a little small book that I wrote called uh, Levels of Commitment. The first M is for minutes. Four M's. The four M's of commitment. You must give your minutes to the church if you are a member. You can decide now before we bring you up to pull away your membership, okay? 
That's why I better tell you what I'm expecting of you. Are you all still listening? I'm finished with the main preaching. This is almost just a five-minute thingy for you, okay? You must give your time. There at the back, we have a sign if you come in, says, we work for the Lord. You can't come here if you are a member and we just see you on Sunday mornings. Then you haven't given your time. Hmm? We want your minutes. Not we, God wants your minutes. I tell you the greatest benefit of giving God your minutes. Must I tell you? It keeps you away from giving your time to Satan. Simple. Because the question is, if you're not in the house of God, where are you? With who are you? And number three, what are you doing? Look how you're sitting here. You're not doing anything wrong. Look, look, look at your neighbor. Nothing. You're not robbing anybody. Say you're a professional uh, cell phone robber. You're not robbing people now. You're sitting still, right? Right. If, you, if, you, if you're like a, a, a sex maniac, virgin breaker, you're not breaking anybody's virgins here. You're sitting still. But when you're not here, what mark they was they? Valet they, valet they. In Psalm 27, the last part, the last part, David said these words. He said, I want to dwell. Psalm 27, as a belief, David slid up. He says, I want to be in your presence. I want to dwell in your presence. Verse, what is that? Six, six, quickly. Psalm 27, verse six. He says, uh, Because they can overkill. Huh? Verse 4. Sorry. Quickly. One thing I have desired of the Lord. Oh, one thing I have desired of the Lord. How many things? What is that thing? And I will seek after it. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord. Look, I'll tell you the secret. Huh? If you're not a church person, you young girls, the devil, he, he puts you in your mind maybe that a church is a very boring place where the father will say, Haja bonda se tora ba. No, 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 no. It's not true, sister. The church is an exciting place. The church is a place of joy. The Bible says in Philippians, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yeah, the, the church is where we shout, go on, we laugh, we experience. He says, yeah, yeah, shout to the Lord with the voice of triumph. But maybe it's where you come from that you think it's all that. Soon, Dorob, I can play dominoes better than you can. No. It's not like that. That's why if you go home, come back again so about two o'clock. You see, many people still here. Those are the people that has come to the place where David came. He said, one thing I have desired of the Lord. Not to, listen, not to rush away from the church, but to run to the church. The Bible says, the Lord is like a, 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 a pavilion. Huh? The righteous run in and they are safe. The nonsense lovers, they run out and they face destruction. So they come to church and they say, When is he finished preaching? Mistake! Mistake! You should say in your heart, Please don't stop preaching. Take your time. The name of the Lord 
is a strong and a mighty tower. The righteous run in. And they are safe. Hallelujah. Do you know I've been surprised. I've been surprised how the devil catches our believers, our own children. And I hear one is pregnant, one is this one. Say, just a few minutes I let you out here. Just a few minutes I let you out of my sight. And some devil jumped on you. But you should have stayed under my wing. But I'm not even God, but at least I'm his representative. Do you understand? But if you can stay in the presence of God, then these evils that wait you outside can't get to you. No, because God will protect you. He, he, the Bible says that God is like a shadow at your right hand. The sun shall not smite you by the day, nor shall the moon smite you in the night. Because the, the God of Israel, He doesn't sleep, He doesn't slumber. The Lord shall cover you. Hallelujah! I see skade wie aan jou rechterhand. Die zon zal jou bedags nie steek nie. Die maan ook nie by nacht nie. Want die Heere, hy is jou herder. My life is in your hand, Lord. And I pray to leave it there. To dwell in this tabernacle all the days of my life. That's why Anna, when Samuel grew up, she said to Eli, Take him, take him. Just be gentle with him. I don't think he can see well. Just help him nicely, okay? No, don't worry. Just look to me. Yeah, Anna said to Samuel, he, She said, Eli is my boy. Let him stay in the temple. And oh, he was a priest of God, he was the prophet of the Lord. Hallelujah. Your, your time. Number two, your, 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 your muscle. M, your muscle. I want your energy, said God. I want your energy. Listen, let me tell you Can it my say? The church, the, your, your activities in the church must make you tired, man. Do you see? Why? Because you get tired if you give energy to something. Yeah? Some of the pastors were playing soccer on Thursday. I tell you, just a few of the runs. We were finished. Our energy was gone because we gave our muscles there. But I've discovered that there are people who get tired from being tired. You do so much nothing that nothing made you tired. Yara ya apio, yara ya apio. Says move and move this. Wow, wow, what? I, I then don't see you here. What are you busy with? What makes you tired? Then you say, No, I must rest. Listen. The Lord worked for six days and He rests on the seventh day. He didn't rest for seven days or for six days and work on one day. No, it's other way around, brother. You must be tired. If you come home from church and you're not tired, then it means you didn't work. If you come home from, where do you work? By shop right, no? If you come home from shop right, you say, yo, because I'm no lekker moog. It's not a problem. You are tired because work makes you. So how can you say you work for a lot, but you're not tired? Then you must don't work for a lot. My wife said to me the other day, she had not your kop neergesit to say, weg. To say, ek moet weg wees, want ek was moog a weg vir die jaren. I'm tired because I work for a lot. You new members.
Thomas, you are joining. Maki! Ons gaat jylle tyd, maki in jylle muscle. And yes, you'll be tired. You'll be tired from your secular work, that's okay, but you will also be tired from God's work. It's not wrong to be tired. It's not wrong. But you'll get some rest. God will give you rest. Actually, we rest in Him. We rest in Him. Well, when we're in Him, we have rest. Amen? Oh, yeah. And, and work is repetitive, isn't it? You go to the same company every day. You do the same things. You cut the same cloth. You stitch the same patterns. Church work is also like that. Sometimes it's repetitive. Prepare the service. Happening. Pack the chairs. It's happening. Sort the cars out. It's happening. Clean the bathrooms. It's repetitive. It's called work. Work is repetitive. But it's the best thing to work for the Lord. Your minutes, your muscle, your mind. Oh, yeah. Give us your mind. The mind must be transformed. Some people are bright students. They are bright workers. They work in the, in the company. They're secretaries. They do what? And they do this and they do that. When they come here, they just sit. Five minutes, they look at me. Then they want to go home. I had enough. You didn't give your mind. If I find out you can do something, you're going to work. You must apply your mind. Amen. Just get my iPad. Get. You must apply your mind. And your mind must be changed. Let me help you quickly. The reason why you come here is the teaching change your mind. If you can't change your mind, you are a very stubborn person. Are you with me? You, you, you are full of a pride. Because the teaching of the word is to transform the mind. To transform the mind. You see, if you think in a different way, you will see me in a different light. You might sit there and your mind say, this pastor is very full of himself. The way he walks here among the people. And the way he's, 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 he's rebuking the people. I think this pastor. That's how you think. But another person next to you says, this pastor, you can see as the spirit of the Lord. Yeah. You can see he's trying to help the people. It's, it's, it's two minds. It's the same pastor. But people are thinking differently. You see, it's how the mind, the mind is not working right. You see, when, 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 when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, John the Apostle said, he said, I'm going to write to you of him who I have seen and whom I have touched. Ooh, that man. But the same Apostle who was with him called Judas, he said, let me sell this guy for 30 pieces of silver. The minds were working differently. But when you come here to break through and you become a member, you give your mind to be transformed according to the word of the Lord. And so when your mother rebukes you again, you don't say, Kick the ofro. No, no, no. Your mind changes. You say, sorry, mommy. Sorry. Sorry that I've been disobedient. Please forgive me. You see, your mommy is going to fall on her back because you never said sorry before. But because we are teaching you in the church. This is how to be a good Christian. You don't speak back to your parents. You don't slam the door in the house that you don't even own. You don't own the, the room. Number two, you don't even own the door. But because your mind is corrupted, you can't understand what I'm saying. But as you come and the waters wash you, you say, wow, this is wonderful. Are you hearing me? I wish I had time, but, but I, don't, I, I need to close. I need to close. In Afrikaans, there's a saying, as they wit what good is for you. You know, if you know what is good for you, we would be thankful you're sitting in a very great place this morning. I, look, let me tell you.
the Bible says you must, the, the, the good preaching, it says, it says in the last days, then the people won't want to hear rebukes and stuff like that. They want nice preaching that will, itch, itch the, that will make their ears, their ears are itching to hear your breakthrough is coming. Yeah. All those who were against you, they will fall, but you will rise. Inside of you, there's a great this, this, this. And you are stepping up into higher things. I see you driving a Mercedes Benz. I see you. You see, people like that. But when I say, hey, you must stop your rude manners. And you must go and say hello to your father, even if he lives in Menenberg. Take the taxi and go greet him and say you miss him. He say, yeah, it is pastor. You see. You see, he's rebuking me now. I don't like this. In the last days, they won't want rebuke. Uh, and especially the young girls. Girls and women are not often rebuked because the husbands are afraid of them. Yeah. Oh, yes. So in a church like this, we, we have the ladies also. We help the girls also. We teach, we teach. This is what the Bible said, Paul. Uh, he said to Timothy, time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. They will want to hear, what is God going to do for me? Uh, let me close. The mind. The mind. What's the last M? Who read my book? Money. I don't want to stay long on money because I'm offending another person here. When you become a member, you will give of your money to the because your whole life belongs to God. Your money also belongs to Him. There are two devils the Lord is going to fight for you when you start to bring your money to Him. The first devil is the devourer. He's the one who eats up everything. He breaks all your stuff at home. You must just repay and sculpt and sculpt and ooh. The devourer. It's like putting money in your pocket, but there's holes in, falls out. That's what the devourer does. The was machine break the TV's glass stick and the Easter will not work. And the crackers on three units. Ja, ja. But when you give your tithe to the storehouse, then your prosperity is coming. Giving a tithe is like a legal contract with God. I will give you this, Lord, if you bless me. And he actually challenges you. He says, try me to see if I won't open. There's windows in heaven. I'm going to open it like this. And then I'm going to pour out my blessing. But it will be so much, you, you won't be able to contain. God loves when, when his children prosper. And you are going to prosper if you obey the word of the Lord. Your money belongs to God. I, I, I hear pastors trying to make people not give money to the church. They are used by the devil. And any pastor who tells you not to give money to your church is used by the devil. You know, because the Bible says the gates of hell comes against the church. They want the doors to close and the church not to operate. Then the devil is smiling. Because then more people go to hell and more young people have no uh, direction in life. Because the church is not in existence. The church also operates with the money system because it's the world system. Are you with me? It's a means of exchange. So now, to get you to, to think in your mind, don't give, don't give. It is actually to say, let's break this church, let the church doors close. But Satan is a liar. And there will be some obedient remnant in the house of Israel that will bring their offerings to the Lord. The second devil you rebuke is the destroyer. The devourer and the destroyer shall be rebuked. Look, you know when you're really rich is when you don't have money in your purse, but you're not worried because you know God is real. Hey, I don't always have cash on me. I don't always have cash on me, but, but I have this peace in my heart that whatever I need, God will supply. God will supply. The Yerra Kikna Se Knechte Man. 
die Heere kyk na sy diensknechte en na sy aan enige persoon wat om dien, God wil provide vir jou. Don't be afraid. Don't fear. God is not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. You will never die of hunger. No. There will always be something for you to eat. If you honor the Lord with the first fruits of the little you have. And you people that are really poor, if you get the ten rand, just give a rand to God. You see the nine rand almost becomes bigger than the nine rand. It's a swollen nine rand. Swollen. Swollen. And it's bigger than the ten rand of your next door neighbor who didn't give anything to God. There's only one God in the Bible that is, that is lifted to compare with Jehovah. It's the God called Mammon. So the Bible says, you can't serve two masters. You will love the one and you will hate the other. You cannot serve God and Mammon. You cannot. And the way to, to confess, I don't serve Mammon, is if you bring your tithe to God. I'm speaking to those who's going to receive a certificate this morning. They must give me four M's. Their minutes, their muscle, their mind, and money. Not to me. Give it to God. Give it to God. Oh, I've, I love this preaching, you know. Please record it so that I can listen to it again in the week, please. I think I need this teaching for myself. Oh, yes. Your blessing is not far from you. It's not far. God is interested in you. You have come to a place like this, huh? It is God's doing. And it's marvelous. Because God loved you so much. He, he directed you, said, go there to Zion. There's a blessing waiting for you. Give your whole life to me. I will take care of you. That's what Jacob said. He said, Lord, I'm lying here in the night with my head on a stone for a pillow. I've got nothing. My brother Esau wants to kill me. Find it in Genesis, please. My brother Esau wants to kill me. But if you, Lord, if you, if you protect me, huh? if, you, if, you, if, you, if you guide me, and you, and you protect me and you prosper me, I will give you a tenth of all. Go to, I will give you a tenth of all. Jacob's vow to God, I will give you a tenth of all. Listen to this. Deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother. Ah, quick. Help them, you, you, you pastors here. Jacob, and the stone which I have set for a pillar shall be the house of... Just go before that, 21, quickly. And 20. I want to show you. Jacob, bow the vow. Matashetolaya. Lift your hands. Bow this vow, you see. Not if Pastor Chris, not if Pastor Chris... No, no. Pastor Chris is just a human being. But he said, if God will be with me, and he will keep me in this way, this way that I go. He was lying in the night, in the darkness of the night. He was lying with his head on a rock. There was no pillow, there was no blanket. He ran from his father's house because he stole the blessing. He didn't get the father's sheep. He didn't get the cattle or the house. He just got the blessing. If you can grab the blessing. If you can grab the blessing. Oh, it's all you need. You don't need money in your pocket, brother. And he vowed a vow. He said, if God will be with me. And he will keep me in this way that I go. If he will give me bread to eat and clothes to put on, 
so that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then shall the Lord be my God. And the stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that you give me, hallelujah, I will surely give a tenth unto thee. If all that you give me, I will give a tenth unto you. Give God your time. Give Him your energy. Give Him your mind. And lastly, give Him your money. Bow your heads, please. Mata sheto la manta shatata. Makate shekete. Before I pray for the new members, I want to give somebody an invitation today to make right with God. I said a lot of things this morning and you heard me preach and talk, teach. But you hear and you say, Pastor Chris, my life is not right with God. I'm very far from the Lord. But today I want to come closer. I want to give my life to Him and I want to start serving Him. Please pray for me. If that is you, put up your right hand. I want to pray for you. If there's someone like that, say, Pastor, pray for me. I want to give my life to Jesus. I see you. I see that hand on, the, on my right hand. Is there another person like that? Yeah. Pastor Chris, I once knew the Lord, but I've, I've now grown cold. I don't serve Him as I do. I'm not in church much pastor i just come now and then please pray for me i want to really give more of my minutes of my energy of my mind and of my money i want those people who put up their hands to just quickly come to the blue carpet step out of your seat and come to me i just want to pray for you before i pray for the new members clap for them yes clap. Again, come on to Jesus. Come on to Jesus. Give him your life today. Come on to Jesus. Beautiful. Wonderful. This is so beautiful. See what the Lord is doing this morning. Touching the lives of so many people. Through this powerful but simple message. That you must be permanently planted in the house of the Lord. Oh, I'm so happy to see all of you. I'm going to help you to say a prayer. Just pray this after me. Say, dear Father in heaven. I thank you today that I am here and that you are here. Lord, I've made many mistakes. Please forgive me. I'm sorry for all my sins. Please wash me with the blood of Jesus. Cleanse me today. I give you my heart. Come live inside of me. Come live inside of me. Please write my name. Please write my name. In the book of life. In the book of life. I believe. I believe that Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ came to earth. Came to earth to die for my sins. To die for my sins. And that He rose the third day. And that He rose the third day. And that He is alive. And that He is alive. I believe. I believe. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Is the Son of God. And today. And today, I follow Jesus. I follow Jesus. I want to serve Jesus. I want to serve Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For saving me now. For saving me now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us give a hand clap to the Lord.